Hey YouTube and welcome back. In this video we're going to be talking about welding aluminum. Not how to weld aluminum, but how to weld aluminum. Automotive aluminum. We have issues with automotive aluminum and we're going to deal with those or something. Beep! <laughs> there we go. Take one. Take two. All outtakes. We've got another premiere coming up right, right. behind. There. Me. Yes. <laughs> and what is that going to be about, Danny? And it's going to be about welding aluminum. Not how to weld aluminum, but how to weld automotive aluminum. So if you've watched the premiere and another premiere, you're here. <laughs> You don't want to miss this. So we will see you over on Danny's channel. And if you miss this premiere and you're watching after the fact. In this video, we're going to be talking about welding aluminum. This isn't going to be a video on how to weld aluminum. You need to know how to weld aluminum before watching this video. This is on how to weld automotive aluminum. All right, in welding automotive aluminum, you're going to come across other difficulties in the welding process that you don't have when you're welding something like this. So let's, let's start off. In welding aluminum, if you're going to start off with um, clean aluminum, by clean aluminum, this is a piece of billet aluminum. This is a brand new AN fitting that we cut, and we're going to weld this on. And we have two clean pieces of aluminum, and we want to have everything clean to begin with, and this you're going to be able to do. If you learned in school or anywhere welding aluminum, two pieces of aluminum plate, you're going to TIG weld. Then you start welding automotive stuff and you start saying it doesn't work the way you did in school or the way you did at home. It's because of the difficulties of the aluminum. It's very porous and as it heats up, it expands and you're going to bring in contaminants and it's hard. That's going to be the problem is getting rid of all the contaminants. So the first kind of welding is automotive aluminum, but brand new pieces. Real easy. I'll show you some brand new pieces that we welded. I welded some pieces for Faye. This is going to be for Faye. We welded her dipstick tube. Those are easy, fun little projects, and those you're probably already able to do. What you're having difficulties, I'm presuming, because I had the same problems myself, is let's get into the first problem with welding aluminum. There's going to be several different things that we're going to talk about. The first thing is cast aluminum is real porous. The older the parts, Harley Davidson stuff, Jaguar stuff, really bad. It's a cast piece of aluminum. As it heats up, it expands. The inside has oil in it. An oil pan is one of the hardest to weld, and I'm going to show you an example of an LS oil pan that had some cracks in it and how I repaired that. But cast aluminum expands, oil gets into it, and that's why when you go to weld, you have all these contaminates coming out, and that's the difficulty. So one of the difficulties most common is contaminated aluminum, and it's contaminated with oil. So how are we going to get rid of that? The first thing we're going to do is you'll see on this oil pan, is I clean it, and the first thing, just, just acid dip it, clean it with anything, any kind of cleaner that you have. A sonic cleaner works awesome, and get rid of all the oils. Then we want to V out the groove. If it's a crack, welding on top of a crack, the crack is still there, and it's going to come back and haunt you, and it's going to come back and bite you in the butt. That's one of the biggest tips I can tell you right now, is get rid of the crack. So yes, it seems more invasive. Look at this oil pan, how I cut into the pan um, pretty deep. And I'm almost cutting all the way through the other side. And I'd rather cut through the other side because inside of this aluminum of this pan, we can V it all we want. The coarse part of where it cracked, oil got embedded in there. So we want to clean the pan, first of all, really well. Then we want to V it out. A lot of times I'll V from one side to another. An example, I'm going to post pictures right about there. And these are pictures you're looking at now of a Lamborghini hub. This Lamborghini hub, it's a suspension part. So we got to be real careful when we're dealing with that too. It also has oils on it. But to get 100% penetration, a lot of times if it's real thick, I cut in all the way over through one side and then start welding from there out weld and then come back in and machine out the other side so that I can get 100% penetration. So stop it people so that's the lamborghini piece that's rolling right about here and i after cleaning it really good i have to cut all the way in through it to get into uh 100 penetration that's a structural weld so i kind of got a little sidetracked off there let's get back to where i'm talking about oily parts okay so putting a v in it and not getting all the way through there you still have those exposed uh, pores that are still have oil in them so go ahead and cut that out 
put it back in with uh, put aluminum back in there is the, is the best way to go. There's no problem with aluminum. It well so easy that you can't cut too much. I shouldn't say that because I've seen people get a little crazy and I need to slow down. But all right. So we cut this oil pan, we've cut it open. Now I've glass beaded it. If I don't have uh, baffles inside of an oil pan, don't ever glass bead anything with baffles. Another tip of the day, don't glass bead stuff if it has baffles in it. This LS oil pan had no baffles. I acid dipped it, I cleaned it, I V'd it out with the die grinder. I even took the top layer of aluminum off um, before I even started. That was the first thing I, that I started. And why? Because just get rid of the top layer. It's much easier to blend it in when the top layer is gone. I'm not saying cut a lot into it, but we just want to take the top layer off. We V'd it. Then I used, it's up, it's up here, you'll see it. I'll put a picture right there of an acid prep. Um, that is a good acid prep. It's made for x-ray welding. We're not doing that kind of stuff. I like it, and if I'm doing anything with oils, I'll brush this on. It's the pink stuff that you see on it, and it, it basically just goes on it and it helps clean it even more. Be careful with using brake clean, especially the older brake cleans with the argon gas and the heat. I believe it makes Agent Orange or something, and you don't want to be smelling that stuff, so be very careful. A lot of old timers, we used to use brake clean like crazy. Brake clean everything, air, and then I was ready to weld. All right. The next tip after doing all of this is your brush. You gotta use a stainless brush. My brushes here have names on them. Um, beep, up there, aluminum, steel, aluminum. They look the same. If you take your aluminum brush, which is stainless bristles, and you use it to, to brush steel, done. You might as well use that in your parts cleaner or use it for steel. Don't come back here and start cleaning this with the brush that you brush something else besides the aluminum. So that's why it's stainless because it's surgically clean. Um, so keep your brushes separated. Don't even let them touch each other. They can be close and talk, but don't let them mingle because um, you don't want to contaminate your brush because then you're adding the, contaminates to, the contamination to the part. So once the part is clean as much as you can, the last step before actually TIG welding is you're gonna brush the part. And throughout the process, I may brush two or three times. And the reason being is that we got it as perfectly clean as we could. If it's real thin, I don't have to preheat it. If it's thick, I have an oven right behind me. It'll go in the oven. I'll have videos of pictures of stuff that was in the oven. A cylinder head, going in the oven. Um, atomic cover is real thin. We don't have to worry about putting it in the oven. I'll run the TIG welder along the top of it real lightly, crank down my pedal a little bit, and I'll let any contaminants that are in it, and there will be contaminants in it, come up to the top. Stop. Brush. Hit it again with the pedal until no more stuff is coming out. Sometimes, especially the older stuff, you probably, if you ever want to experience heartache, try to weld an uh, early Harley Davidson um, knucklehead case. It can be done, but you're doing this over and over again. You're heating it up, stuff's coming out, you're brushing it off, you're heating it, stuff coming out, until finally no more stuff's coming out. Now you can weld. So that's the tip on welding aluminum parts that have, have oil around them, is that you gotta let those pores expand and let the oil come out of them. Like I said, we wanna clean, clean, clean the best as we can, then use your TIG welder to bring up anything out of it, brush it, brush it, no more stuff's coming out, go ahead and weld. Okay, so that's your first and biggest dilemma on welding aluminum is in fact the oil that's in it. What's the other problem that you're gonna have in welding automotive aluminum? Corrosion, electrolysis um, and corrosion in the cooling system. So, so we have a manifold and we have fittings that are broken off into the coolant part. Um, we have water ports that are all corroded. Try to weld them and you're gonna have a mess because the same thing, it's contaminated not with oil, but it's contaminated with uh, a corrosion. Um, electrolysis is a, is a way of eating the, uh, the aluminum from the inside. We don't need to get into about electrolysis, but it happens inside the cooling system when you don't run a ground strap and you don't run the proper antifreeze. That's another video. All right, basically the same thing. Get your die grinder out and you're gonna have to get rid of all of the bad aluminum. If you try to weld on top of it, 
you may get it to stick. It's going to have so many holes in it, it's not going to hold water. The key is that everybody wants to take shortcuts. You got to get rid of it all. So if it's going to go into the coolant system and you got corrosion, take a die grinder and get after it and get rid of all of the aluminum, the top layer, and then start going until you hit fresh aluminum. You'll, you'll be there. Sometimes the little spot will end up being a hole about this big. You, if you ain't in it for the long haul, stop because you're going to have to remove all of the corrosion. And then when you start welding, you're going to have to be easy on the heat. If you don't preheat an aluminum manifold or anything thick, you're going to burn the top layer as you crank down on your pedal. You're going to think, I'm going to crank down and put some heat in this dude. No, you're going to burn the aluminum on the top layer and then that added as uh, you're going to contaminate it even worse. So, aluminum that's thicker than a quarter inch, um, most definitely a cylinder head, most definitely an intake manifold, it's going to go in the oven. We're going to put it in the oven. I'm going to show you pictures. I might do them down there of this aluminum cylinder heads. There's several of them. I'll put all of them there. Not all of them, but some to give you an example of they're going in an oven. They're going in an oven. It's coming out to my table up here. I have old... I have a lot of old gloves that I've used. I think this is actually asbestos. I'll lay them on top of the cylinder head to keep the heat in. So I use the oven to heat it up. I'm not using my TIG welder to heat it up. I got a big TIG weld. I can crank it down. Not using the TIG welder to do the heat. I'm letting the oven do the heat. Then I'm going to use the TIG welder to just weld it. So I'm not uh, using all this energy. It's already got that, that heat in there. So now when I weld and it's thick and I crank down on it, it won't burn the top layer off because it's already hot and it's taking it in. Um, so that's the next tip I can tell you on welding stuff that's thicker. Um, when I first learned how to weld, I learned how to weld by a man who welded uh, uh, pieces for Coca-Cola. So he taught me how to weld aluminum tubing. Awesome. Great. I started welding AC condensers and there's an oil inside of there. So uh, he was already gone, and he's like, I called him up, and my, my buddy, and I said, hey, I'm having these difficulties. He comes over, and he just said, I can't weld that. He said, man, I weld br brand new stainless and brand new aluminum. I don't ever have to weld with, with contaminated stuff. So I learned how to get the oils out of inside of AC condenser and, oil, and AC lines out when I was young. I started welding aluminum cylinder heads. This is back in the, I'm going to date myself, in the Escort days. All Ford Escorts cracked. So I started, you know, let me weld the Ford Escort head. I had trouble. They, uh, the, the crack got further. Uh, I, I could weld it. One out of 10 um, may work and nine failures. Um, it didn't withstand a pressure test. It just had, if it was a good weld, it still had little pinholes and bubbled through it. In a combustion chamber, we don't want, uh, it has to be airtight in a combustion chamber. And I just couldn't get it done. I mean, even pressure testing, I was having failures. One out of 10. Then I learned, wow, I'm having to really crank down on it. I brought my barbecue pit from the house, propane, fired it up, put the escort head in there, cranked it up as hot as I could in the barbecue pit, opened the barbecue pit, and welded in the barbecue pit. Man, that was my biggest key. I was like, wow, preheat the head. Preheating the head, like I said, you're not cranking down on it and just burning the aluminum. Also, big, big part, preheating the head is going to keep that head from distorting. If I sit there and get meat evil on it right here, anywhere, it's going to distort. It's going to get hotter here than anywhere else. And you're going to have a bent up piece. You're going to have it all distorted. I can weld an aluminum cylinder head and mill it, and it'll mill in one or two thousandths. How can I do that when the head doesn't even distort that bad? It goes in an oven, gets preheated, crank it up. I'll heat it up to the seats almost fall out. So 300 degrees, you're doing good. You're preheating the head, the complete head. Now when I go in there to weld, I'm not, you know, the, the, the head is like, oh, thank you. I'm not putting all the energy in this one spot and distorting it. If you ever welded something to heat right here, it lifts up the other side. So preheating is the next tip of the day. Third tip of the day, slow down. I know. Okay, so oven and get rid of the contaminants. If it's oil, acid dip, if it's corrosion from coolant, what are we going to do? We want to get rid of it all. That's when you really got to get invasive and take away layers and layers until you finally get to some good, uh, good aluminum. Um, if you can see on this, I'm going to put it over here, this Ford Flathead, um, it had a lot of electrolysis and corrosion inside the head. Sometimes you have a little pinhole on the outside of the cylinder head. 
Now, can you see how big the hole is? I had to V this thing out to get down to the top layer. Don't put a weld on the top. You're not doing anything. It's, it's gonna bite you in the butt. If it's a crack, get rid of it. If it's a pinhole, get all the way in there and see what you got underneath. Generally, if it's electrolysis from the inside or corrosion, the outside has one little pinhole and the inside could be the size of a quarter or a 50 cents piece. It's all eaten up and you got one little pinhole on top. Get that pinhole, V it out this way and see how big of a hole you got. Tip, if you got electrolysis or corrosion inside and you're welding one spot, that's not the only spot. That's the spot that went through. So tip of the day, think this through. You may be welding for days. I fixed this spot here, I pressure tested, it leaks over there. I fixed that spot, I pressure tested, it leaks over there. I, um, because it wasn't leaking now because it only leaked in one spot. Once I welded that shut, I may have more and more. You may end up opening it up and then you end up with a hole that big. Let your customer know right off the bat, until we get inside, we don't know what it is. And if it's corrosion or electrolysis, there's no guarantee. If you wanna try this, we can do this, but I, I have no way of knowing what's on the other side of the head underneath the exhaust seat, an example. Uh, you have no way of knowing. I can look with the light inside and I try to see how much corrosion it has. So take that in and, and embrace it, that um, corrosion, you have no way of knowing where it corroded. A crack, you can see the crack. You can determine, did it crack because LS, they, they dropped it, it cracked. That's why it cracked. Um, so all that tips of the day. What are we doing? We're cleaning, we're cleaning, we're cleaning. Um, we're preheating. I'm gonna give you another tip. When you have aluminum that's this thick and you V it out and you cut it with your die grinder and you got an opening now that you're gonna go weld, radius the opening that you're gonna go weld. You're gonna get in with the die grinder and you're gonna cut it, die grinder, you got a nice V in there, perfect. The top and the bottom, you took a die grinder and you cut it, are two sharp, sharp lines. And I need to do a picture, to, I don't know if I do, but you have a sharp line. So you have a sharp line because you cut it. Radius that line, radius it. So those sharp lines that you have, and you're gonna have four because you put a V, two on the top, two on the bottom, take a die grinder and round those off. So the opening you have now are round. They're not square. Why is that important? When you start cranking down on the heat, the heat from the TIG welder is gonna go and those sharp edges, boom, it's gonna burn those edges right off. And then you're gonna have contaminant in your weld. So if you round and radius the ends that you're gonna weld, I can sit there with my TIG welder, crank up the heat and I can start to get the both sides to start to melt so that I can weld them without burning them. So tip of the day, make everything nice and round so that the heat can go and, and disperse. Let the heat go, don't let it burn, let it get hot, let's get to welding. Okay, I don't know, but I don't know. Any questions? I've got a tons of questions, but the question is, why is that making noise? All right, so I know there's tons of questions. Tell your buds, tell your friends, hit the like and subscribe, leave me a comment. I gotta get out of here because I gotta get home and edit a video. So we'll see you this Friday. Um, if you start at the beginning of this, it's a premiere. Now that it's not a premiere, um, this will be on. But if you're watching it right now, you just see, saw a phase video. Um, we started with phase video on some aluminum pieces and after her video, I'm premiering my video, so um, I don't know where y'all are, but thanks for coming from there. Hang around. In just a little bit, we're gonna premiere Rick's video, and it's for a uh, body shop. And Rick, if you watch my video of how to paint like a pro, I learned how to paint like a pro from Rick. And uh, um, I think that, that Rick's gonna come out really good to give in uh, the old school advice that y'all been coming to me for. I think a lot of people are gonna go to Rick's channel for old school advice on painting. He's taken my painting way up to a different level and he loves to educate. So hang around, don't leave, um, get you something to drink and I'm, you're gonna see me now. Well, actually they're gonna see me now, but I'll be typing in there with Rick's premiere. And after that, then it won't be a premiere anymore, but all right. Better get to work and get this video edited so that we can do all the things that I'm talking about. And I'll see you on the next one.